Gang, there's a lot of great new fragrances out there that are launching and I've got a video on luxury fragrances today, fragrances from the luxury houses or luxury brands that I'm really, really you know, enjoying and wearing a lot lately. These are fragrances that are from the niche houses and also designers, but really great luxury fragrance options that you guys uh, should know about. And some of these fragrances I've already discussed on videos or reviews, and some of them I will be discussing uh, very, very soon after this video airs. But all really, really great fragrances, 10 of them, and I've got a couple of bonus options as well. So find out about really awesome new uh, luxury fragrance options coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today we're talking about luxury fragrances. I do enjoy niche fragrances on the luxury end. Some can go over the top luxury. These are not necessarily over the top luxury fragrances, but definitely luxury niche and designer options are available here. We've got Givenchy and Gucci, uh, you know, featured here, but the rest of them are definitely on the niche side, niche houses, and they don't, you know, launch any clothing and things like that. But We'll let you know what they are and as always if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet please do subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click that bell icon so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways so do you guys enjoy luxury fragrances luxury houses niche houses or designer houses that have their luxury collections let me know put a comment down we're going to start off with the first fragrance this is from the house of gucci and it's love at your darkest i do have a video launching for this fragrance and the other new fragrance fragrance in this white bottle that came out. They're not necessarily as great as something like the Voice of the Snake, Last Day of Summer, the Rose Fragrance, or even the Eye of the Tiger, the Eyes of the Tiger, I should say, not the Eye of the Tiger, because that's the name of a song. But this one's definitely the better of the two, and it's a peppery fragrance, and I've mentioned in the past, I'm not the biggest fan of full-on peppery fragrances, but this one's quite nice. Again, it's not as good as some of the other fragrances from the collection, but Love at Your Darkest does have some great smelling experience. It has cedar, black pepper, and olibanum as a note, and for me, it's interesting because I find black pepper to kind of have incense nuances, and then incense or Olibanum in this case or frankincense having kind of black peppery touches as well So I feel like they complement one another so beautifully and it's done perfectly here So if you like black peppery woody lightly smoky incensey fragrances Then love at your darkest should satisfy you try it. I think it's a uh, pretty solid It reminds me a little bit of the last day of summer the pepperiness in this reminds me of the pepperiness in the last day of summer but I do prefer last day of summer a lot more which is uh, one of the first fragrances that came out from the house of Gucci in their Alchemist Alchemist Garden collection of fragrances. So number one, we're talking about Love at Your Darkest. This is an unranked video. Moving on to the house of Rubes Milano. This is Calicanto, this one right here. Does anybody know this particular house? So this is an uber fresh fragrance that's to die for beautiful. It features a Calicantus note plus peony. It has Mahonia, bergamot, orange blossom, and pink pepper. So it's a fresh, citrusy, floral, green kind of a fragrance experience with a little, very, very light, beachy experience. And that's very, very light and that's not overwhelming. But it's so gorgeous, it's so beautiful, and definitely very, very luxury house. I don't know if you know this particular house or not, but their fragrances are pretty darn good and their bottles are gorgeous. And I first discovered their the brand over at Harrods in the salon upstairs and I fell in love with the bottle instantly it was a red bottle but this is one of their latest offerings and if you enjoy fresh floral fragrances citrusy and also you know floral and green definitely check out Rubes Milano's Calicanto it's a great smelling fragrance and I think it should do a satisfactory job when it's really really warm outside so the next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is from the house of Narcotica this is Dolce Di Diablo Dolce Diablo is that how you say it man this is uber intense and it's funny I took it on the trip like a month or so ago a month and a half ago now uh, my family was testing this out with me they were so overwhelmed with the smell they do enjoy its strong fragrances my whole family does and I do too but they felt like the, this is so potent as a fragrance experience that they couldn't spray more than one or two sprays because the way this fragrance sprays is like so cloudy and like you got to close your mouth otherwise that fragrance is going to go inside your mouth it is just really really potent 
didn't. But Dolce Diablo is a boozy, smoky gourmand fragrance with cognac, cacao, sandalwood, dried apricots, Madagascar vanilla, rum, apricot, and patchouli. So if you like gourmands and if you like boozy fragrances, really, really intense, big, big cloud, try Dolce Diablo. It's so intense, guys. I think it would be great. It sticks on and then stays on for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, I do like my intense fragrances. No, I, I like them. I like equal amounts. I like the light stuff that are more skin scenty, but I really, really love the, the more beast mode like fragrances. Moving on to the house of Byredo. It's Vani Antique from the, uh, uh, what's the name of the collection? Uh, something Veils. Uh, I'm drawing a blank with the, the collection. This is the fifth fragrance in that uh, Veils collection, and it's really, really delicious, guys. It's absolutely delicious. This, to me, also is not as intense as the tobacco mandarin but it has great staying power it's just not as big as a cloud but it's really still a very very intense wearing experience and very very delicious it's amber white woods vanilla plum labanum and musk it's super delicious very very boozy spicy woody and very very vanillic experience i think it's delicious i think this is going to be very very um uh, popular with a lot of people that like vanilla fragrances. Only thing is this is pretty, you know, expensive. It's a very expensive fragrance, so that's the disappointing part about it. But as a smell, it's fantastic. So I think it's as good as something like Vanilla Diorama from the House of Dior. Different fragrances, but I think it's as good. But price-wise, this is extremely expensive next to Vanilla Diorama. So anyway, Vanilla Antique from the House of Byredo. Check that out. I think you will not be disappointed. But then again, I don't know if you're into the vanilla idea. I am, and I loved it. So next up, going to the House of BDK. It's Gris Charnel X-Ray. This one right here. So I have a video soon to air from the house of BDK and I shot a video with uh, David Benedek who came to my studio and we shot a whole video talking about this fragrance and how it compares to the original Gris Charnel and uh, you know a bunch of other information about his brand. Stay tuned for that very soon. I think it should launch tomorrow but Gris Charnel X-Ray is really really great. It actually seems like a deeper richer and thicker version of the original and it becomes a little more woody as well and a little fruitier. I get more fruits with this one and I think the fig note that's in here has been amped up a little bit but this is all about sandalwood, cedarwood, bourbon vetiver, cardamom, black tea, iris, fig, Madagascar and vanilla. Definitely has a creamy touch, it has a creamy experience. The fig is great, it's a little fruity, not necessarily green and it's got the vanilla and you know it's got this kind of sweet vanilla quality to it uh, but definitely kind of woods as well. Lots of woods in this one, it's like a nice fusion of woods with the vanillic touches and of course the uh, fig. And then I can't forget the tea and I think because of this tea note just like the original there is definitely a coziness about this particular fragrance although I feel like the original is a little more cozier than this one but still it's so smooth and cozy that it's uh, quite delicious. So Gris Charnel in the X-ray concentration is a great luxury fragrance that I'm enjoying a lot lately and as I said stay tuned for a video I shot with David Benedek the owner of BDK fragrances soon to launch a very very soon all right moving on to number six this is not a ranked list guys this is from the house of Givenchy this is Noctambule this one right here I did a video on these three fragrances from uh, the house of Givenchy in their collection La Particulaire, I think, Particulier collection of fragrances. And this is the, the recently launched the Hotel Particulier collection of fragrances. That is just amazing. This Noctambule is so, so delicious. But, you know, it's nothing new that I haven't smelled before, but they've done a great job with this particular style here that I'm absolutely obsessed with. It's lots of oud or agar wood. There's grass rose, there's cumin, there's papyrus, and there's pink pepper. Man, it's delicious. If you like the idea of Udispahan, but a lot more interesting with that cumin in here. It's a little dry, a little jammy rose. It's spicy. And that papyrus note in here, love this note, does wonders to this fragrance to give it that kind of like interesting uh, patchouli, uh, vetiver, kind of a woods earthiness to the fragrance that I think is to die for. This to me is so, so amazing smelling in the three fragrances uh, together that I think uh, I should uh, highly recommend to you guys. And again, we're not breaking any new ground with this particular fragrance. It's been done before 
for, but they've done a great job with this particular style with oud and rose together. So Noctambule from the House of Givenchy, a great, great fragrance. Moving on to the House of Fragrance du Bois, it's PM, this one right here. And I spoke about this recently. I had an in I have an interview with uh, producer Michael and he collaborated with Fragrance Dubois on this particular fragrance. And this fragrance is so good. It is addicting kind of a smell. Somebody actually commented recently on that video and said, you didn't mention that this smells like cocaine. I didn't want to mention that because I was interviewing producer Michael and I didn't want him to think that, but I guess it would have been okay. This does smell like cocaine. It literally is addictive in that way. But to me, it's a leather fragrance. Lots of leather here, an overdose of leather with tuberose, but I also get some jasmine touches in here. It's definitely musky and animalic and it does have woody and ambery experience in the dry down, but it's quite delicious and I think you should definitely check it out. And uh, also we have a giveaway on that video, a full bottle, tester bottle giveaway of this one. So if you haven't caught that video, please go catch it to find out all about PM from the House of Fragrance Dubois, watching my interview with producer Michael very famous YouTuber, wealthy guy, and then also participate in that giveaway. So PM from the House of Fragrance Dubois is a great, great fragrance. Moving on to the House of Mise en Cire, another great luxury option. I'm not featuring the Vert uh, the vet fragrances that uh, fragrance that came out from this brand. I'm actually moving up to the more expensive uh, fragrance Ombre Magique uh, in a kind of a newish collection with white bottles. This is a great smelling powdery amber with uh, rose. So if you like the idea of rosy ambers, this is definitely one that you should uh, try. It, I, it does have some woodiness in there as well and some spices along with like orange blossom. There's definitely that presence in here, but it's definitely really, really delicious. It's great, great smelling amber fragrance. Nothing like I have before. Somebody also asked me recently if this one smells like Ombre Nuit from the House of Dior because of the rose and the amber experience and Ombre Nuit is a kind of a rose and amber as well. They're different. This one to me is more powdery and more textural whereas the Dior is a little more syrupy sweet and ambery. So they're kind of different but you know I think if you strip away some of the notes from this one you might end up with a fragrance like Dior Ombre Nuit, but I don't get the similarities. But if you like the idea of rose and amber together, uh, definitely check out Ombre Magique from the house of uh, Mise en Cire. Moving on to the house of Nishane. This is Favionis, this one right here. Do you guys know this one? So this is a great rose, rose and patchouli, not pa well it is patchouli and rose as well but there's also oud here so it's more in the line of something like black oud which is rose oud and also patchouli but this one also has a cypriol note kind of like papyrus if you guys don't know cypriol go check out my whole video on cypriol fragrances i do a whole video on it with fragrance options and what it smells like and things like that cypriol nagarmosa and also uh, papyrus kind of are related and they do have similar smelling qualities and it's definitely full on here in this particular uh, fragrance experience, whereas you have the oud and the rose, plus you've got that patchouli and you've got that cypriol also. In here, there's also some spices and some fresh notes, but there's definitely a smoky touch as well. It's a really, really great fragrance, Fabiona's from the house of Nishane. Check it out if you uh, don't know that particular fragrance. Moving on to a, a new love, an absolute love for this particular fragrance. The reason I love this one, it's another cheaper fragrance from the house of uh, Raja Parfums. This is a male Shepra and it really really takes me back to the early 80s really does takes me back to when I first discovered Halston Z14 this is Apex from the house of Raja Parfums I love the nostalgia behind this particular fragrance it is so so amazing I remember I was a little boy, I smelled it on my uncle and my dad. They used to wear this particular fragrance, uh, Halston Z14, and this one takes me back. I actually recently spoke about Halston Z14 in my video on Saturday. Currently, it's not in a, the best condition when you buy uh, whatever's selling at the stores now. This is a great, great fragrance, so, so good. A great Chipra, and Raja Parfums does Chipra's, Chipra fragrances like no one else. He does, he loves Chipras. He's mentioned it to me in my couple of interviews I've done about you know him and his brand. Uh, Brand. But this is a leather, balsam fir, cypress, orange, patchouli, ambergris, tobacco, and moss. Wonderful, wonderful fragrance. This is really, really delicious. Raja Parfums Apex. And then last but not least, this particular fragrance, I'm putting it down as a luxury fragrance. I included one 
fragrance from the same brand. This is the second fragrance. And I'm doing a video on these two fragrances, a full video on these two fragrances soon. So stay tuned for that. But this is Byredo's De Los Santos. Not necessarily uber luxury. I find this collection uh, more luxury than this because, you know, they're pricey and everything. Same thing with Maison Cire. The, uh, the white bottle collection definitely is a lot more expensive and a lot more luxury than their clear bottles. But I am going to feature this one because I haven't spoken about it yet and I wanted to uh, let you guys know all about it. This is a unique fragrance in that it sounds like there's going to be Palo Santo in the notes and I don't think they've credited Palo Santo because this is De Los Santos. Palo Santo, De Los Santos, maybe there's not supposed to be Palo Santo in the notes, but it's a great green aromatic powdery musky fragrance experience that's really, really delicious. It sits close to the skin, but I think uh, it has great lasting power and I love that greenness. And I've recently had a friend test this one out. They fell head over heels for it. They're a very interesting friend that they like very different things and I can't really make up my mind what their favorite style is kind of a friend. Does that make sense? They'll like this fragrance and I think they're going to like the next fragrance that's similar. They'll hate it. So it's like I was going to, uh, I was thinking, oh my God, they're not going to like this fragrance, but they did end up liking it. But a great fragrance with lots of aromatic sage here. There's the orris, there's the musk, there's the ambroxan, olibanum, cystus incanus, and mirabelle plum. Mirabelle plum is being trendy lately. It was recently recently featured in the Juliet Has a Gun uh, fragrance and now we have Mirabelle Plum in here. But in this particular fragrance, it's not necessarily full on Mirabelle Plum. It's there though. It's a little more in the background because the powderiness from the orris note and the musk kind of covers it up. But it's quality. I really do enjoy this one and I think it'll be a great everyday wear fragrance uh, with its unique smell. So this is uh, De Los Santos from the house of Byredo. And the last, that's the last fragrance I'm going to talk to you about today. Let me know your thoughts on these fragrances guys. And is there another luxury fragrance that you're really, really enjoying? Uh, put a comment down so I can find out. Anyway, I appreciate you tuning in. Stay tuned for another video soon. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. And I did say that I was doing 10 fragrances, that was 11 fragrances, and this is a bonus fragrance. So this is not necessarily a new fragrance, but it's a recent discovery. A friend was selling a bottle at a discounted rate and I ended up buying it. This is the Harmonist Hypnotizing Fire. Are you guys familiar with this one? This is absolutely really, really great. It smells really, really great. The patchouli in here is top notch, but it's also very ambery, powdery, and also vanilla to die for kind of a fragrance. There's rose in here as well. And so it kind of acts like a sheepra, but it's a powdery sheepra. The patchouli is really, really intense in this one with that rose. So that's why I'm thinking it has these kind of like sheepra like qualities. But the Apopanax has this kind of a sweet, smoky experience. And of course, the sweetness from the Apopanax with the vanilla sweetness kind of really do blend blend beautifully together. There's one other note that they've credited here. It's like a pimento pepper. So there's a little bit of a spiciness. This brand doesn't get a lot of love, but this is a really, really great discovery. I can't believe how great it is. And I'm just now coming around to this particular fragrance and I'm not disappointed. So the Harmonists Hypnotizing Fire, definitely a great fragrance for you guys to check out. So check it out and let me know what you think about it. And other than that, guys, uh, that's the last fragrance for you today. Have a good one. Bye.